everyone. So the focus of this presentation is going to be on answering that single question. So is SuperMemo worth using? So basically, just to give you an overall brief overview of what SuperMemo is, it's an application for converting knowledge to memory. So if I have, say, 50 academic papers um, or 100 different articles that I want to go through from, say, less wrong, uh, I can put them into SuperMemo. And as long as I put in a bit of time and effort, I can slowly convert that into long-term memory. Um, so SuperMemo is thus very useful for people that want to do lifelong learning and not just forget everything they're learning. Uh, researchers, problem solvers, and people aiming to increase creativity by having more knowledge. So if it already sounds appealing enough to you that you'd want to try it, I would skip the rest of the presentation and just go straight to supermemo.wiki slash learn. Um, but if that isn't convincing enough, I'm going to go a bit into two things. So first is, why is memorizing things useful? And the second is, how does SuperMemo actually work? So I thought for a long time about what is the best way to introduce SuperMemo to people. Um, and in the end, I decided on SuperMemo for wizards. So I'm going to show you exactly how SuperMemo works um, and a bit of the why. And I'm going to use wizards as an allegory, just to be a bit more intuitive of an explanation. Um, so first, I'll start off with why would a wizard bother using SuperMemo to memorize things? So I think that there are three main cases you can make for memorizing things. So the first is that you can memorize things for di direct application. The second is that you can memorize things for improved creativity and problem solving. And the third is that memorization is essential to knowledge growth. So let's look at that first, uh, so direct application. So imagine that you go into a cave of goblins and you suddenly chance upon a horde and they're about to attack you. So you could write down your spells in a spell book and then just get out your spell book every time you want to cast them. But in many situations, that's not practical. And by having the spell already in your mind and ready to cast, uh, you end up getting a lot of benefit. So anytime you're in a bad situation, you can just immediately cast it. And I think that this is very useful. Um, but the thing is that the calculation for if it's worth it to memorize something or not for this direct application is basically, is the time you spend memorizing something um, less than the time that you would save or get from having it in memory? So in some cases, this might make sense. So if you have, say, a very popular spell that you use very often, say, Fireball, um, having that in memory will save you, or save your life probably, multiple times. But let's say that you have a spell that you use only once every decade or two. So for a spell like that, it might not make so much sense. So say that it takes you 30 minutes to memorize a spell, um, but if you're using it only once or twice over a decade or two, it might not make sense because the time that you would spend just retrieving it from a book would probably be less than the time you would spend memorizing it. Um, but there's still plenty of areas where it makes sense to memorize stuff for direct application. So that's the first area. Now, the second area is for problem and cre solving and creativity. So imagine that you go to a dragon's lair and you want to slay a dragon. And you have four spells that you know. So Fireball, Chain Lightning, Destructive Wave, and Ray of Frost. So this gives you a fair amount of options, but dragons are pretty powerful creatures, and maybe every time that you cast any of these spells, the dragon just dodges. What do you do then? So the easiest thing to do would be to just look at how you can combine your spells to be a bit more effective. So if each of these nodes here, or each of these corners, represents one spell, we have around six different combinations of spells we can apply, and this is sort of our problem-solving ability. These are how many different things that we could theoretically apply, ignoring just applying single spells or combining more than two spells at once. So six combinations isn't terrible, but there aren't so many viable options. So for example, combining Ray of Frost and Fireball wouldn't make much sense, so that wouldn't be a very good option. And a couple other combinations also don't make much sense. But let's say that we double this, and you have eight spells. So now you have way more combinations. There's around 28 combinations here. Uh, so you have way more options. Um, so as an example, maybe you could use Sleep and Fireball together, or you could use Chain Lightning and Blindness and Deafness to increase your effectiveness and prevent the dragon from dodging. So by having more knowledge in your head and being able to connect all these pieces, you're sort of able to vastly increase your problem-solving space or how creative you can be and how many things you can do. So in the real world, this is equally strong. And if you draw on, say, only a single school of thought or a single major, then maybe you have, say, only evocation spells. 
if you have only one area by itself, you're sort of limited in how much you can, like, how creative you can be. But let's say that you have two areas that you're very familiar with. That opens up way more possibilities. And by memorizing things from different areas, so let's say that your main, main subject is economics. And let's say that you study a bit of uh, psychology. So if psychology isn't your main focus and you don't memorize it, you'll just end up forgetting it. And you'll end up here having maybe only, say, four spells. But if you take the time to memorize these spells that maybe you don't use so super often, they can still open up a lot of creative possibilities and applications in terms of problem solving. So the third area uh, for why memorizing things is to look at knowledge growth for century old wizards. So let's say that you're a wizard and you're 100 years old. So let's say that a 20 year old wizard might know 20 spells then would you expect a wizard that's 100 years old to know at least, say, 100, 200 spells? So you might, but it's not so easy for a wizard to do that uh, because of normal human physiology. So let's say that this is you, and this is time, and this is 100 years. So at first, you might be able to learn fairly rapidly when you don't know too much. You can spend your, all your time on just a few spells. But as time progresses, your rate of learning slows significantly, and it sort of levels off. And the reason for this is that even at this point, you're still learning lots and lots of new spells. The problem is that you're going to end up forgetting old material. So you might forget all the stuff here, and that forgetting is dragging you down, and it's preventing the new spells you're learning from going up, and from a more linear knowledge growth. Um, and this is where memorization can really come in handy. So let's say that you use Super Memo. So over time, um, at first you might learn pretty rapidly, and it'll level, level off a little bit, but then it'll stay mostly linear. Um, and what this means is that with Super Memo, over time, you're sort of guaranteed to have a long-term increase in knowledge. Because you can sort of be sure that when you're at this point and you're learning new spells, you're not forgetting all the old material. Um, and that means that you can continuously cre keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. Um, so that's the third area of why I think memorizing in Super Memo is valuable. So with the why out of the way, I'm going to go a little bit into how would a wizard use Super Memo. So let's say that you're a wizard's apprentice and you have around 40 spells that you want to learn and remember. So that's, that's pretty hard, that's pretty hard. So how would you do that with Super Memo? So let's take a specific example. Um, so say Fireball. And this is the description for the Fireball spell. Now, how would you process and remember all the important bits of this spell? So your first option is just to keep rereading the same spell over and over and then just hope the details stick, or to use it enough times and hope the details stick in that case. But in Super Memo, we can do something a bit more efficient called a closed deletion. So a closed deletion would start with something like this, and then you can quickly turn it into a flashcard like this. And all it looks like is when you're doing a repetition, you'll see the question, and the closed deletion will hide part of the sentence from you and try to force you to recall the answer. Um, and by transforming the details from the spell into closed deletions, uh, we can do something special. So we can use something called spaced repetition. So spaced repetition is basically a way of memorizing almost anything for a long term. And the way it works is that your memory is like a muscle. So each time that you struggle to remember something, the memory gets a bit stronger. So maybe when you do a first repetition, it'll be a period of one day, then three days, then a week, and it'll keep increasing over and over. And as the interval gets longer, um, you'll be able to recall the information more and more. And essentially, the interval gets so long that it'll become decades. And you're pretty much guaranteed that you will almost never forget that information. So to show you a real example, let's say that I have a card like this in Super Memo, so a simple closed deletion. Um, so this is an example of how the repetition history could look. So if I'd started this card on, say, July 24th of 2019, Super Rainbow gave me an initial interval of seven days or so, then 15, then 146, 161, and then around three years. And essentially, each time that I do a repetition, the interval keeps climbing more and more. And you might be wondering, OK, why does it go from 15 days to 146? So that's part of what makes Super Rainbow so wonderful. So the algorithm works in mysterious ways, but it's essentially working and adapting to your memory to maximize the probability of long-term recall. Um, and while you might not be able to know exactly why it's doing things, generally it's pretty accurate and it works pretty well. So if we go back to that fireball spell and we see all these different closed deletions, we can make a bunch of small cards like this. 
that are quizzing us on these small different pieces of Fireball. And basically, I can guarantee that if I actually am in a situation where I need to know the casting time of Fireball, I can recall it and remember that it's one action. So this here, what I've shown you so far is just base super memo. We're just making a bunch of closed deletions and a bunch of flashcards. But where super memo really shines is with incremental reading. So going back to our earlier spell list, we have around 40 spells here. What's the best way to process all of these? Because I don't want to just like learn five and then forget the rest afterwards. I want to have as many of these as I can in my memory so that whenever I come to a situation where they could be useful, then I can actually apply them. So how do we do that? So Super Memo has two core features for this. So the first is prioritization, and the second is incrementalism. So what I mean by prioritization is that in Super Memo, um, I've already imported a bunch of spells. So I have a full list of spells here, and I have a bunch of different spells, and I've collected them here. Um, but the thing is that even if I have all these spells inside Super Memo, and I can process them one by one, if I just go and say order that it's listed here, it'll be pretty inefficient because while Acid Splash is sort of useful, there might be other spells that are of higher priority that might be worth learning first. So Super Memo handles this with a priority system. And the way it works is that if I go to Outstanding, uh, just so if I go to Outstanding and Super Memo, Super Memo is going to order those topics, that material that I showed you, those individual spells, in order of priority with a little bit of randomization. And what that means is that, say that I only have 10 minutes per day to go through my spells, I know that whatever I see first is going to be the most important material. I'm not going to be wasting my time on, say, some really useless stuff. I'll be spending my time as well as I can. So that's the first thing. So trivially, what you could do now with Super Memo is basically find a spell like this, and then make a bunch of closed deletions like I showed you earlier. Um, so that would be pretty straightforward, but that's just, so prioritization is just the first part of what makes Super Memo wonderful. So the second part of what makes Super Memo wonderful is something called incrementalism. And the way that works is that instead of just making all the closed deletions right now and doing a bunch of work right now, all I'm going to do is just take this spell and then break it down. So it might be a bit confusing here, um, but if you have questions afterwards, I'm happy to answer them. But I've basically just made two extracts from this Mage Armor spell. And now I have two smaller topics. And the reason that we do this in Super Memo is that if I make all of the closes at once, I have a few issues. Um, the main one is that it's just too much work at once. And I'll make too much work for myself by doing that. Um, the second is that by separating review over time, so by first extracting this today, and then seeing these subtopics, say in uh, this is I'll see it in four days, and this I'll see in maybe three days, by separating out the review of it, um, the next time I see it, I'll be able to process it more effectively. Because on reading it the first time to the next time I've read it, my brain has had the chance to do a bit of memory consolidation, so honed representation of whatever I've read a little bit better in my brain, so that whenever I look at this the second time, I'm not coming into it blind, and I have a better idea, and. I'll just be a bit more efficient at understanding it and working around it um, the second time. So what you would do then with this incrementalism is I just saw this spell and I did a little bit of work and in Super Memo I would then go to say this next topic about tools and then I can make another extract and I can move on to yet another spell and another one and I can just keep breaking down these different spells and uh, different things that Super Memo is showing me and I can make smaller and smaller pieces. And eventually what I'll do in Super Memo is I will create sentence long extracts, something like this, and say I rewrite it. Something like this, and then I make another extract and I have something very short. So this is the goal in Super Memo. So you'll start with lots of very long information and in the end, you'll break down spells into something like this. And when it's something like this that's really small, what you can then do is make a closed deletion about all the important semantic parts of whatever you want to remember. Whoops. And through this process, I've started with this long mage armor thing, but I've ended up with just a few, um, a few questions, a few closed deletions, and these will maintain whatever I think are the most important parts of that spell. 
so this is sort of the fundamental crux of incremental reading. So having really big things or having a lot of things and then slowly incrementally breaking them down and in the end converting them to active recall space repetition cards that are in long-term memory. So I hope this presentation gave you enough of an overview of how Supermemo works to be willing to try it. And again, if you're interested in doing so, please go to supermemo.wiki slash learn for more information. Um, and if you have any questions or you'd like to talk to me further about this, feel free to email me uh, or just reach out to me any way you can, and I'd be happy to help you do better learning. Thank you.